All right, guys, check out this roof we just completed. I want to walk you through the process from start to finish. Let's go. We're removing this nine inch rustic shake tile. Unfortunately, it's reached its life expectancy. The underlayment below is shot and this roof needs to be replaced. Now this is one of my favorite concrete tiles as far as a flat profile. This tile shows really well. I wish they made it. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. We're gonna be replacing this roof with a new 12 inch wide concrete tile. And this is the profile and color the homeowner has selected. Now where I'm standing is an active leak. There's actually stains in the drywall ceiling just below me. As we remove this, we'll figure out how extensive the rot is. I'm expecting to find some plywood damage, maybe some minor truss damage. We'll remove and replace the fascia along the roof edge at this location as well. Now let's take a look at how this tile is installed. This is the fun part of removing concrete tile when there's a mud patty just below it. So it's basically like you're removing two layers of concrete now. So we've got the tile removed. You're looking at how this tile was secured to the 90 pound back when this roof and this home was built. This is a mud patty that was set over the tile underlayment. And before this dried out, the tile was then placed directly over that, securing it to the underlayment. So this is a perfect illustration of what happens to 90 pound when it reaches its life expectancy. You can see here from the patty that as it's lifting, it just tears the 90. The 90 pound is very brittle and breaks down in a 15 to 20 year period which is the reason why a roof like this needs to be replaced. Now, one thing I mentioned early on to the homeowner was my concern with this siding. And you can see where it's just beginning to rot. I asked him if I could remove all of the two bys and the beveled wood siding and replace it with stucco. Now I'm gonna do stucco to mimic this exact look. Same reveal for the trim as well as the siding from trim to trim. Now, once it's stuccoed and it's primed with the masonry primer and painted, now he will not have any rot at this critical spot in his roof. Now this concrete tile was originally made by Pioneer. Pioneer was bought out by Hanson and the tile was continued being made by Hanson, the exact same profile. Then Hanson was bought out by Integra. Integra kind of did their own rendition of this tile and it shifted and changed slightly. It was a little bit thicker. The cut along the edge had changed at that time. So what we're looking at right now is an original Pioneer tile. And along the edge, I'm expecting to find some plywood rot. Pioneer, when they made this tile, had a concrete trim piece that was supposed to rest directly below this field tile. That is not here. So now if you'll see, the tile rests directly on top of this drip edge. Pioneer tile actually made a trim piece to fit here, made out of concrete, and that concrete trim piece was, to, was supposed to elevate this first course of tile. This tile is elevated without using that, by placing a wood beveled strip directly below the drip edge. And what we're gonna find as we demo this roof is that the 90 pound underlayment took a flex at this location. And when the 90 pound took that flex, it's going to crack and break at this seam. And when that crack breaks at that seam, water's gonna push through beyond that and rot out the edge of this roof. We're gonna find out how much rot is actually here, replace it as needed. Now what you're seeing right here is the slope coming down and breaking right along this area. And then it comes out to the edge of the roof. And what we're gonna find in several locations as we go about this is we're gonna find a crease right here. And once that crease is broken, the water is gonna push underneath the underlayment and create fascia damage out here, potential truss damage and plywood damage. All right, now what I wanna illustrate right now is this gap below this concrete tile. And as you're looking at this gap, you can see that the 90 pound is taking on the flex. 
The 90 pound will break down in several locations as we go around the roof perimeter. And the water will have then pushed below the underlayment at that cracked seam, rot out the fascia and plywood below. Now, when we get ready to install the new concrete tile, I'm gonna illustrate roughly now what this is gonna look like. So prior to installing the new concrete tile, we're gonna have an eave closure and we're actually gonna have that eave closure made out of aluminum so it will not corrode. It'll be attached using stainless steel fasteners. It's gonna have about a one inch rise with weep holes allowing water to run naturally out from underneath the tile, down the face of the drip edge and exit away from the fascia. So that eave closure will keep the first course of tile elevated, just like this first course is elevated now, but with wood. That'll then allow each course thereafter to lay correctly and smoothly. When installing a hot mop application, the applicator should embed the underlayment over the base sheet using hot tar. And the hot tar is missing at several locations along the edge. The 90 pound should not come loose from the 30 pound felt base sheet. The hot tar is what adheres to both of these products, making this a watertight seal. Now, as this 90 pound tile underlayment fails and water pushes below it, water will look for locations like this square cap fastener. And as the square cap continues to rust due to moisture getting to it constantly, this is where you'll have water damage inside your home. Now what I've just exposed is this wood strip that went directly below the drip edge. As we remove these locations along the entire roof edge, then expose all the plywood, and if the plywood is rotted, we will then replace it. The new drip edge along the roof printer will be aluminum and we'll use stainless steel fasteners this time. And the fasteners will be spaced every four inches on center and not every foot. Obviously this drip edge was never nailed to code because it shouldn't be that easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say anything. Now this is where we're at earlier in the morning and we kind of illustrated. This is a construction site, okay? So this is where we started this morning illustrating the breakdown of the 90 and talking about what this next eave closure is gonna somewhat look like. All right, now where the guys are right now, they've got this second floor section removed. They're installing the 30 pound felt now with 10 tags and inch and a quarter ring shank fasteners. These 10 tags will keep the felt in place. This felt is acting as a base sheet, which will allow us to get ready for the hot mop process. So once this 30 pound felt is complete, we'll run all new drip edge along the roof edge around the perimeter. Once that's in place, we'll then be ready for valley metal. We'll take care of the chimney, which we just talked about. We'll call in for our second inspection and then we'll be ready to hot mop this with a modified underlayment. All right, so I just talked to the guys. We're gonna go ahead and start the demo on this chimney right now. We've got plywood on site, so if we have any subsiding that is rotten, we'll replace it. We'll dry this in tonight, get it watertight, and ready for all new flashing at the base of this chimney. You can see this bottom edge was never primed or painted, which moved the water up through as it wicked through and caused this bottom edge to start to rot. Now, as this was laying up against the siding, this was probably not caulked very well, which allowed water to push through the back of this trim board. The next trim will be all stucco and this will never happen again. All right guys, so far the subsiding looks like it's in really good shape. I'm gonna have the guys now cut the rest of this felt, pull it off, remove the flashing, we'll paper flash it for tonight, have it watertight and get ready for the new build. All right, the guys just started this morning tearing off over the garage. Let's go take a look at this.
All right, so one of my guys just asked me whether or not we're gonna leave this flashing in place. And due to the fact this is there's a lot of movement behind the siding and this is real thin aluminum, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. We're doing a hot mop modified roof system, which is gonna last for years. And I do not wanna leave this existing flashing and have this roof compromised in any way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the siding as carefully as possible. And any siding that can be reused, we will. Any event we need to replace it, we'll replace it with like siding to match. We have the chimney now prepped for new stucco. We'll have stucco bands the same width, width as what the wood trim was on here before. We're now ready for the stucco. We have the copper installed down at the base of the chimney and all the joints are soldered, making this a solid piece and possible for water to get inside the home. Another detail that's gonna to have to be changed is at this location. So this fascia is gonna to have to be pulled away. The existing flashing will be removed. Once the new flashing is installed, we will then put the fascia back in place. Our next step is to repair these two by fours where the trusses extend out to the fascia. We need to make sure these are repaired so when the fascia is removed, we have something solid to nail to. Now, as we install the new plywood, we are not going to nail the plywood to this old fascia board. That way the guys can remove this fascia without fighting the new nails. Once the new fascia is in place, the plywood will then be re-nailed to the new fascia. All right, so the guys have removed the siding and the existing flashing that was here. We've installed new 16 ounce copper flashing. We're getting ready to solder the joint. We're securing the wall flashing to the walls using stainless steel fasteners. Okay, I wanna point out right here on the roof edge, we've replaced a lot of rot so far and a lot of that rot stemmed from that wood beveled strip directly below the drip edge. The 90 pound created that crease. So what I wanna do now that the plywood's been replaced in these critical areas, I'm gonna use an oversized drip edge. We're gonna use a four inch wide top. When this house was built, this wood strip should have been placed below the plywood or the plywood would have extended out past the one by two. But since we have this void, I'm gonna use a wide top drip edge so we can have something solid to nail to. And we'll use the same size face on the drip edge here for aesthetics so it does not overwhelm the two by fascia. One thing I like using 30 pound felt in a situation where we're at right now, where we're constantly working on it, it can tear. And it's real easy to do a repair in that situation. Now right here, earlier I was up here describing this one by two and the fascia detail and how we're gonna protect that and I tore the felt. All we're gonna do now is just take a small piece of this felt, slide it under where the slit was made and put some temporary nails into it to fasten it and keep it watertight. All right guys, so we've got new siding and existing siding back on these walls. We've got them completely reflashed now with 16 ounce copper. We have stainless steel fasteners securing that 16 ounce copper to the wall. The fascia details, a lot of the fascia we were able to reuse. I have a painter coming in now to touch up anywhere that needs to be caulked. Any new wood will be primed and painted and the walls will be painted from the roof up to the soffits as well. All right guys, before there was siding on here wood siding had rotted the trim was in really bad shape and so we're going back with a stucco finish we're going to do stucco siding to simulate the wood siding stucco trim to simulate the wood trim we've installed two new vents here at the chimney as well all the copper flashing is in place ready for stucco now as we were tearing this roof off you could see me just lift this drip edge up with one hand and rip it off so we've got additional fasteners now this drip edge is secured the way it was supposed to be done the first time. All right, there is a lot of rotten fascia here along this garage. We've pulled all that fascia down. We've installed all brand new two by fascia, one by wood drip. We're ready for priming and painting at this location as well, right before the drip edge gets installed. So originally this was galvanized wall flashing along these walls. I thought they were aluminum at one point. We removed the galvanized flashing. The copper flashing is in place. I was telling the homeowner the copper is going to last basically forever. We're not on the coast, so we're gonna use an aluminum drip edge. However, the aluminum drip edge cannot touch the copper. So we've 
apply the peel and stick directly over the aluminum drip edge so that the similar metals do not touch. So what you're seeing is the peel and stick laying directly over the drip and the copper flashing is setting on top of that peel and stick which is acting as a barrier between the two metals. Once we have all the prep work complete, we'll be ready to install this hot mop product. This is a certainty GMS product. It's my favorite type of underlayment when installing a tile roof. All right guys, we have the tile on the roof. It's here, we are installing it now. Let's go take a look. All right, where I'm at right now, along the edge of the roof, we're installing an aluminum tile eave closure. This eave closure is set in modified roof cement. It's gonna receive a stainless steel fastener. This eave closure is non-corrosive due to the fact that it is aluminum. All right, so the eave closure is going to basically allow this first course of tile to lift up so that the courses beyond the first course lay properly. Now, as the water pushes through this concrete tile, the water will exit out these weep holes in the eave closure. The existing roof did not have any eave closure. This time, the water will exit the roof properly. I wanna show you guys the aluminum tile channel. Now, typically, roofers will use two by fours. They may use galvanized metal. I wanted to make sure that when this roof was being built, we have no metals that can corrode. So what you're looking at is an aluminum channel where the cap tile will eventually sit over embedded in foam. All right, so as you can see, the tile is being installed and we are using ICP foam tile adhesive. Every fifth course, I'm also using a stainless steel screw as an additional fastener. A couple of details I wanna point out as well is this tile is being installed. All the walls have now been put back. We're able to reuse a lot of the siding. We did have to replace a few pieces. The walls have all been primed and painted. I talked to the owner about using copper wall flashing and he liked the idea. He liked the idea that we we're able to solder it, making the copper flashing essentially all one piece. Check out these details. It turned out really well. Also take a look at this oversized diverter. Now this diverter is gonna push the water out away from the wall as water exits this roof system. Take a look how this chimney turned out. Now that it's painted, I'm so glad the owner allowed me to do this in stucco. It looks really good. Now we were able to save him some money. We did leave the wood just above these bands in order to leave this chimney cap and the termination cap above. Had we taken all that off, it would have added a lot more. Thankfully, this wood directly below that cap was in really good condition. It's now primed and painted as well. All right guys, what I'm doing right now is priming these vents and leads so that they can be painted to match the concrete tile.
All right, guys, we're going to install one coat of paint. This paint's going to match the tile. We'll let it cure and then apply a second coat. Behind me, you can see the guys are mixing the cement. They're mixing the cement for the hip and ridge and around those voids at the goosenecks and leads. They'll take the oxide, put it in the mixer, and have this blended so that it matches the concrete tile roof. Wow, this roof is looking really good. I think the owner's gonna be really excited when he gets home tonight. We went from a nine inch wide tile to this 12 inch wide tile. He was worried about it, but I think it looks really good with the wall colors. Check it out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, see ya.